Hello everybody, we are taking a refrigerant out of a ream heat pump package unit so I can change the expansion valve on the inside here. Kind of a chilly day, but it is almost 40 degrees now, so it's not too bad. But 10 or 15 year old packaging, I'm not quite sure. Take a look at it, I think it was 14 years old, I'm not positive. It's written on the other side. But, let me see. There's a scroll inside. All right. But scroll stays. I do expansion valve there. There's our bad valve right there. And our sensing bulb right there. Underneath that tape. Looks almost as if it's been changed before. At some point or another. Not sure. Definitely been retaped before. We're gonna take that thing out. It wasn't opening as far as it should have. Uh, we were getting pressures of heat that were over 400, over 70. And in cooling, 180, over 40, 45, right in that area. So definitely not doing its job. All right guys, now that our recovery is done, I'm gonna cut the expansion valve out of there. Cut here, here, and here. There's plenty of slack in all these lines where I don't need to sweat it out. I'll just cut it right out and pull the lines right back in there. Uh, this line can obviously move forward. There's a lot of slack in the equalizing tube here as well. It runs downhill and has a loop in it. So I'm going to cut them out, fit it back up, and braze it in. Another tip, guys, when brazing, I go ahead and clean off the surfaces I'm going to braze on. You can do this some of the time. You can't do this all the time. Go ahead and clean them off. So when I cut them off, I don't have to worry about trying to sandpaper all the grime off of it and have it get inside the lines. I can go ahead and sandpaper it off before I have to open it up. Yeah, I've cut our old valve out, and as you can see, it looks like it has been changed. At least I hope it has. I don't think Reem would send it like this. But you can tell. Maybe some not so good at brazing. There was some heat damage on this valve, perhaps. But we got the new one fitted in down there. And we're going to go ahead and braze that thing up right there. Okay, the valve's all brazed in. I'll tell you what, most of it wasn't too bad. Our joint over here and right here was not too bad but when we got here it was very difficult to reach the torch head to the bottom of it make sure it ran around you don't want to give it too much heat but if you don't give it enough heat you sit there all day and end up burning up the valve so it's a kind of a fine line and truthfully you have to kind of find that line yourself by brazing for a long enough period of time but the new valve is in equalizing port both half inch sides so there we are I'm going to pressure test the system Went ahead and put some bubbles on a TXV while we have nitrogen pressure on it. And I went inside here and checked it out inside here to make sure we didn't have anything that looked like it was clogged up or any problems in there and we we're clear. So everything looks good. About to put it into a vacuum and then we'll be recharging the red package unit. Ream, red, whatever. Alright guys, we have the vacuum pump hooked up. Our repairs done. I'm gonna let the vacuum go while I pick up some of my stuff, like the oxygen settling torch, some of my other debris. I usually pick that stuff up during pressure testing and vacuum, so I'm good to go whenever we charge. I don't have a lot of cleanup to do afterwards. So that's where we're at. I'll let you know when the vacuum's done and we'll start charging her back up. All right, guys, we have our expansion valve here. We have the spring and the nut from the bottom on this one is not adjustable, so if you take this one off, you'll be seeing all your refrigerant go by you in a hurry. Look inside there. There's a lot of oil in there. A lot of, a lot of oil. Let's see if we get that. How much coming out? I think we see there's a lot of oil in there. Too much oil. Let's take off the top, see how it looks. That's definitely not what you want to see inside your TXV. Here we have the power head for the TXV taken off. It bolts off too. And what happens a lot of times with these TXVs, when I've seen them in some of my videos, and I'll put a link to them, is that the bowl of the power head or something is leaking because there's a different refrigerant in this power head to counterbalance what's in the equalizing line. And once this refrigerant leaks out that's inside the power head in the bowl, the system gets pumped down because the valve shuts. So that's where you get a lot of this TXV action where you start up the system and air conditioning and it pumps it down, but the heater works just fine it's because an AC is running refrigerant through this valve and the heat it's either using a different valve or an orifice 
or it can be the opposite. Heat it can pump down with the outdoor TXV and work fine in air conditioning. But this is the power head, just so you all know. Alright guys, I'm weighing my refrigerant back in on liquid. Testo's hooked up down there. Coming up on two pounds. I think we have about a six pound charge, I gotta double check. And I'm doing a little bit of cleaning up. And we'll be done soon. Alright guys, we restarted the unit. Keeping in mind it's about, let's see, less than 40 degrees outside. Probably between 35 and 40 degrees. And last time we had this unit up and running, high pressure skyrocketed to above well, 400. The internal compressor relief valve opened up. You could hear it squealing, whistling by. Uh, you could actually watch the pressure drop off the head pressure by 50 or 60 pounds with that valve open. And then the suction pressure would, of course, go up because you'd have an increased suction pressure from that valve bleeding by. So this time we're a lot closer to where we should have a little bit more charge left. We can definitely tell that's not going to occur now. And definitely a lot more happy with the performance today. Okay, guys, we're seven pounds later on refrigerant. 214 over 43.8 temperature outside of almost 36 degrees so pretty cold for heat pumps it's good pressure I actually changed the fan speed as well I'm sitting on low speed so I bumped it up to high which most likely is just a result of it you know, default being on low so I set it up because it's more of an alignment duct system so I wanted to have enough air against that static pressure and I think we'll find it's more efficient that way as well so we're all done our valve was the culprit it's all changed out and everything's working well now. The next time I'll see this thing is in the spring for 